it is that time again where you send in your wrap problems and I try to fix them and today we're joined with Crumble. He has got a bowl of corn and he might not sit here for the whole video but he is our special guest for today. Aren't you bud? So as always just to start with a few disclaimers, firstly I can't answer every single question unfortunately but doing these videos I want to help as many people as possible and try to get round to some of your questions so submissions are open at the moment, you can send in your questions to emiologysubmissions at gmail.com I'm also taking mouse submissions because I want to do the same video for mice too. And secondly I am not an expert, I don't know everything there is to know about rats I'm just coming from a place of my own personal experiences and trying to help as many people as possible. So the first problem is about bar chewing. They said I don't know what to do because the cage is well over the minimum and is about the size of a third class for a rat. We just don't have that in South Africa. They get at least one hour of playtime each day with plenty of different types of chew toys and lava ledges. They chew very loudly and it wakes me up in the middle of the night. Yeah, that's definitely a problem. Do you have any advice on how to stop this behavior? So to me this sounds like you are providing them with plenty of things to chew on so I don't think that's the problem. Bar chewing tends to be either one of two things, either boredom or doing it to try to get your attention. So the first thing I would think about is he may need a bigger cage, sometimes some rats or pets in general aren't happy with the minimum even though that is the set minimum, they do need a bit more space if they have a lot more energy and I know some of my boys, Crumble for example, would not be happy in a fur plus ferret size cage just because they have so much energy and they want to get that out, sometimes at times that aren't the most convenient for you so I think possibly upgrading their cage to a bigger one might help the problem. To make things easier on you as well I would try to switch up their routine and try to do things right before you go to sleep so try to free roam them right before you go to sleep and get some of their energy out and also try to start feeding them right before you go to sleep if you're not doing that already because then they can spend many hours foraging in the bedding and searching for the food instead of chewing the bars when you're trying to get your sleep. So if you're not already, I do recommend scatter feeding them because this takes them such a long time compared to giving it to them in a food bowl and also making sure you have enough bedding to dig and forage in because that's going to keep him active and busy and away from the cage bars. Secondly, I also recommend giving him very, very complicated foraging toys. If you're not already providing foraging toys, try to find ones that are a bit tricky to do and are going to take him a very long time. It kind of sounds a bit mean to make them have to really, really work for it, but I've got one toy which I'll put a picture of, and I stick a very large whimsy chew in that, and it's really, really difficult for them to get this out, but they spend hours and hours chewing this, and he can redirect his chewing behaviours towards this, towards something that is going to reward him, that's not the cage bars, and take up a lot of his time. So hopefully if you implement a few of those things, if you're not already doing them, that should hopefully help. Some rats, unfortunately, once they're in that behaviour and that mindset, it can be quite hard to get them to stop, but hopefully these things do help with him if you're not already doing them. And I know how frustrating it can be because rats making any noise at night makes it really difficult to sleep, but the sound of them chewing the bars goes right through you, so I hope for your sake he stops doing it. Crumble has left the building, or rather left the table, and left it in an absolute state. Crumble, that didn't last very long. So next up we have two questions from this person and the first one is about weight and it says I've had five male rats throughout the past few years and none of them seem to have reached a big adult size or weight. I give them an unlimited amount of oxbo and a healthy amount of veggies and fruit that just never seem to be as long or healthy as my breeder adult males. Is this a common issue or should I change their diet? So to answer that question first, I think because you are giving them an unlimited amount of food which I don't really recommend because this can actually lead to obesity which is kind of the opposite problem but I think because you are giving them as much food as they can physically eat, I don't think this is really a diet problem, although I personally would not feed the oxbow food, I think this is probably more down to genetics, although your breeder tends to have larger males, they may be selecting and keeping the larger ones, I think it probably is more down to genetics because if they were having as much food as possible, they would get as big as possible if that makes sense. So I wouldn't worry too much about your rats not being as big as possible because this can vary, rats vary in size and shape, as long as they're not physically very very thin and you can't feel notable signs of them being underweight or even overweight, I wouldn't worry too much but I would try to not free feed or overfeed your rats, I would try to get them on a schedule of having a certain amount of food every single day. 
The next question they have is, with all of my past five rats, I've never been able to reach a super close bond with any of them. In fact, only one of these seems to have really warmed up to me. All of the others didn't or don't like to be held and aren't super affectionate towards me either. I see people posting about their rats cuddling with them or laying down on the lap and I wish I could have that with my boys. I've tried a bonding pouch, giving them a shirt with my scent, etc. Is there something I'm doing wrong? So firstly, no, please don't worry, you're not doing anything wrong to cause this. Every rat is different, all rats have a variety of different personalities and traits, and I think it's much more normal to have rats that are energetic and want to explore their environment, rather than rats that are lap dogs and want to sit with you all the time. I think social media really portrays rats that are cuddly because these are the kind of videos that do very well, these are the videos that go viral, but none of my boys would sit with me for an extended period of time. These rats tend to be rats that have been out for free roam for hours and hours and got really tired and then start to settle down, so please don't worry it's anything you're doing. Rats tend to have very different personalities and that's okay. But I would recommend in the future if you are looking for cuddly rats, try to find a breeder that breeds specifically for that kind of temperament. Some people breed rats and prefer them to have very hyper energetic personalities. Others will breed cuddly, friendly, really squishy rats. So try to talk to breeders beforehand and talk about the temperament they go for. And that should help. Obviously it's not a guarantee because all rats are different, but trying to go to a breeder that breeds for that should hopefully help you in the future. So next is a question from Diane and she says she's got three beautiful little pet rats in September last year. So that would make them not quite a year old, almost a year old. One of them, Keith, has changed colour hair on his back. He's somehow going a bit ginger. Have you ever heard of such a thing? So yes, this is a fairly common thing in black rats or darker rats and this is called resting. So there are a few things that can cause this. The first thing is genetics. Genetics can play a big part in some black rats being rustier than others. And also as they get older, some black rats tend to get a bit more rustier, but the main thing can also be a copper deficiency. This can cause the ginger color you're seeing in his fur. So this is not anything to worry about too much. If you do want to fix this, you can try to increase the copper in his diet. Try things like barley rings, or I think liver also has quite a high copper content. So have a look, have a research into high copper foods and try a few with them as long as they're safe, of course. And see if that helps and see if that brings him back to a nice rich black colour. Um, but if not, it probably is just genetic, but it's not anything to worry about too much. And I just saw your second question about you having COVID. I hope you're okay and I hope you're well now because this was sent well over a month ago, I apologise, but you don't have to worry too much about your rats catching COVID. I think as far as I know, when I looked at this, I think it was last year, so probably not as much research has been done on it, but I think when I looked last year, there is no evidence of rats catching this or spreading this or having symptoms. So for anyone else that's watching this, don't worry too much. I know there's been evidence of cats and dogs being able to catch COVID, but as far as I know, there's no evidence of rats and you don't have to worry too much. So the next question is, I have two rats currently and they have a double quitination cage. My issue is that they always dig through their litter box and get the litter all over the cage. I've been looking at ways to make a dig box in their cage, but I'm unsure how to go about this. I can't order a custom panel or make a box myself, so I was wondering if there are any alternatives to give them enough space to dig. So firstly, I know how annoying it is to get bedding all over the floor and all over the cage from the litter box. Sometimes you can give them all the digging opportunities in the world and all the sleeping places, and the litter box is like the place to be. Don't know why, don't ask me, but they just love the little pellet things in the litter box, but I think it's really good you're looking to give them a digging area because you have mostly got fleece in the cage, I think, yep. So giving them a digging area is a really good idea. So there's a few ways you can do this. I think it's like Home Depot or something, somewhere in America, that sells big black plastic uh, cement trays. They're supposed to be like the perfect fit for the base of the critination cages. I'm not entirely sure where they're from, so you might have to Google that, but they fit pretty perfectly into the base and that's gonna allow you to put bedding in the base. Or if you don't want to do that, you could just buy a big plastic storage bin like I've done to give my boys a dig box and either just have this with cocoa soil and the lid off or you can also keep the lid on and just like drill a big hole for them to jump in. Either is fine, but I think either those two things is gonna be really good to give them places to dig in the cage. But I hope that helps. I think it's really good you're looking to give them digging opportunities Although knowing rats, you'll give them either a dig box or a base and they'll still go back to the litter trays and kick them all out because that is just how rats are. Next 
that we have, I have three male rats who are around one and a half to two years old. My issue is about how much they pee when they walk outside of the cage. I know it's natural for rats to pee when they walk around. It's the amount they do it that's the issue. And my vet, <laughs> why did I say that's so weird? And my vet has even said it's abnormally frequent. Because of this, we can't let them walk around on our white carpet because of living in an apartment. We've tried to use boxes flattened on the floor so they can still have playtime outside every day, but we don't get that many big boxes. Is there anything you would suggest that we can let them run around in outside of the cage to fix this? So I don't know if my answer is going to be the most helpful, it does seem like a bit too much of a simple solution, but just go to a really cheap place that sells big massive blankets, maybe like fleece blankets, fleece tends to repel water and not let the pee soak through to the carpets. Get as many big blankets as you can and have these be the designated wrap blankets that you put out during free roam, they can run on these and it's not going to soak through to the carpet. Also I would recommend investing in some sort of playpen, so shoe storage units from Amazon are really good. You can use these to block off under the cabinets, under the sofas or other areas of the carpet that the blanket's not covering and that should hopefully help to keep the carpet a lot cleaner because male rats especially are going to scent mark. And if you don't want it on the carpet, it can be pretty difficult to get them as much free roam as you can. So hopefully getting big rat designated blankets is going to be the answer. Next up is a problem from Caitlin. And this is another one along the lines of rats being a bit destructive to the home. And this says one of my four boys is a bit more wild and independent than the other three. For example, when he tries to tug my living room rug into his cage to nest, I need to see a video of that. I drop a bunch of clean rags and cut up pieces of old clothes where he's tugging and he happily collects those. Oh my gosh, so cute. However, there is one really destructive behaviour that I haven't been able to successfully redirect. He's obsessed with chewing off the paint on the wall behind my sofa. Oh no. I physically have to pick him up and put him in his cage because if I just move him to another area and try to redirect him, he runs right back to the paint. That is so naughty. He doesn't do it every time he's out, but when he gets the urge, there is no stopping him. Um, I think you need to send him onto My Strange Addiction because he sounds like he's got a wall eating problem. And here's a picture of the damage, oh dear. It does seem like he's attacking one particular area, so I think for this, because it is behind your sofa, it's not going to matter too much if it's not the best looking solution. So I think either get some play pens, like I mentioned in the previous problem, either ones from Amazon, these could really work and just use this to block off the area because if you choose them it's going to be cheaper than re-cementing your entire wall um, and re-plastering the entire wall so try to block off these areas or just push these panels right up against where he's chewing or you could also invest a bit more and get a sheet of perspex to temporarily attach or permanently attach to the wall and he's not going to be able to get behind this or move this to chew the wall so I think either of those is going to be the solution to stop him but that is so naughty you could also try to cover that area in something that doesn't taste nice. I know there's things on the market for dogs and cats to stop them chewing furniture that tastes like bitter and things. That could possibly help with rats, I'm not entirely sure. Just make sure whatever you're using is safe, obviously, just in case he does ingest it, but that might also help. But I wish you the best of luck. Some rats are just very, very relentless. Once they've set their mind on doing something, they're gonna go back there and they're gonna remember in like two months time, even if they've not been back to that spot, Oh yeah, I was destroying the wall. I need to continue my hard work. So I wish you the best of luck in stopping this behavior, but I think covering it in something permanent like Perspex is probably the best solution. So last question is from Jay and they've said, I have four boys, two are picked up as babies in early Feb and two more are picked up on May the 1st. One of the babies I picked up in February is still even slightly smaller than the new babies, despite how much older he is. And I didn't know why, don't know why rather. He's not just skinnier, he's physically smaller in every way, and his brother from the same litter is much larger, like twice the size of the new babies. So I wouldn't worry about this too much, as long as his condition's fine, as long as he doesn't feel too thin, and you can't feel his spine and things, and as long as he's eating, drinking, active, and running around after his younger siblings, I wouldn't worry too much as long as he seems healthy. This is fairly normal, in some litters you do get a run, and they are fairly small compared to their litter mates, and this happens in some litters, I know my two rats, Whisper and Twix, believe it or not, they are from the same litter, and Whisper is like double the weight and double the size, and that's always been the case. Twix is just a very small rat genetically, it doesn't matter how much he eats or how much I do to help him, he is always just genetically a very small rat, and it's proportional if that makes sense, like he's not smaller on the hips or the waist, even his hands and his tail are smaller than the other rats, and that's okay. 
Right dwarfism is a thing you do tend to get dwarf rats. This tends to be something people breed towards and they're specifically breeding dwarf rats and they'll say they're breeding dwarf rats. It doesn't tend to pop up too much or too often in random litters, at least not in the UK populations. If you have a small rat, it's likely just genetics or them being the runt of the litter. Actual real dwarf rats are quite rare, at least in the UK, and these tend to be around the size of an eight week old rat for the entirety of their life and they are very very small compared to my big 800 600 gram rats um, you can definitely tell the difference so dwarf rats are a thing that's likely your rat is just a bit genetically smaller than the rest so as i said earlier try not to worry too much he's probably just genetically naturally a much smaller rat and just like people you get people that are four foot eleven and other people are like six foot five and they look very very different same thing goes for rats as long as he's eating and healthy and keeping up with his brothers and friends without problems i wouldn't worry too much so that is it for this video and this episode of fixing your rat problems don't forget if you would like me to help you with any problems you've got with your rats or your mice send your emails to the email in the description and they may feature in the next video but i hope you guys have enjoyed this and it's been helpful don't forget to subscribe and from me and crumble we will see you in our next video